Coach Berry. After that, the floor will be open for questions. Really, really excited. You know, it uh, the, for whatever reason, I think there's a there's a couple of moments in in you know preseason camp that happen where you kind of know what's on top of you. But kind of as the head coach, this is kind of that kickoff whenever you actually get in front of the media and you start talking about an opponent rather than your own team. Um, you know, excited about watching this group play. I think that this group's really prepared well. They prepared well all through the off season. Uh, they've prepared well uh, here in preseason camp. It's been they've been a lot of fun to coach, uh, just because it is obviously a mature football team, and so we're able to do so many more things with them, uh, as which coaches love, and just the um, their I think their ownership in the program and and their willingness to come out every day and work hard and do the things we ask them to do, rather than us having to coax them into that. Um, and it's been it's been interesting chess match, I think, even in preseason camp here, too, between the staffs in terms of the things that we've added, the things that are new. Uh, and so it's it's been a lot of fun for, I think, not just the staff, but for our players. But this is the most fun, is now you're getting ready for game week. Uh, we're going into it uh, really healthy. Um, we've held some guys out, as you guys uh, no, uh, some of that was to kind of rest some guys and make sure they had legs, and and some of it was to try to uh, buy in some more reps for some of our players that uh, we felt like uh, maybe are not quite as experienced and needed a few more repetitions, and so we were able to do that. And so, other than Centarius Donald, um, I expect everybody to be ready to play on on Saturday, and uh, and then hopefully uh, Centarius will get cleared here shortly. But for right now, that's kind of where we're at. Um, so we feel good about kind of our health and uh, our preparation and now excited about obviously playing a tremendous Oklahoma football team. Uh, this is a team that uh, is obviously very, very athletic. Uh, it's not obviously as mature a football team as what they had last year, uh, but then that brings up the other problems that you have in first ball games in relation to uh, trying to uh, – cover everything that they might possibly be covering right now. Obviously, with a, a new quarterback, and we knew this kind of going in, that this group was probably a little bit more athletic than Landry Jones was, and that we would see a little different style and transition in play. I'm sure that they're not going to abandon their whole offense from the past because it's been so exceptional. But the reality is that all of a sudden we're dealing with a little different Oklahoma team on offense than what we did, uh, what we would have last year. And then defensively, they've, uh, you know, they've got some new staff members, uh, talked about some transitions going on there. Uh, they've also had a, a couple of injuries, it appears. And so we're kind of having to prepare for a significant number of things from a defensive perspective also. And uh, I've got just tremendous admiration for Bob Stoops and what he's done there, uh, partly because I grew up in the state of Oklahoma and I recognize the monster that that thing is. Uh, there's been certainly significant storylines in relation to the the successes that he's had uh, during his time frame there, and I think it's just phenomenal. And I, as coaches, we we tend to maybe appreciate this more than the fan bases do sometimes because you look at the number of wins that he's had and the average wins that he's had over ten point six, ten point seven per year. I, I don't care where you're at uh, in today's college football. That's astounding. It, it's hard to win. I mean, it is hard to win games, and that's astounding. And uh, so we're no, we know we're going to face a team that uh, is very talented, that's going to be very well, well coached uh, in a hostile environment. And golly, you wouldn't want to open the season up any other way, would you? I mean, that's that, this is as tough as it gets. And, and so we'll kind of find out kind of who we are and what we're about early on. And, uh, again, you know, really Saturday can't come soon enough for all of us. Questions? <clears throat> Because you talk about that mutual respect, that it was obviously his pressure yesterday. Uh, he thinks the world of you guys, and uh, and by there's no chance in the world that he's going to overlook this football team, or he's not going to let his overlook you guys. Um, but how do you? I, I'm not saying I think you need to motivate your guys, but what's the the threat on your team that you can't wait to get in there and play this group? With? Well, I, I think that part of. Uh, you know that we that mantra of you know put a ball down that we've kind of coined over the last few years. I think it, it doesn't just it doesn't just speak to you know guys showing up and playing. It speaks to I think uh, the opportunity to play, and and if you're a good player, you don't care who you play. 
you, you're just excited about just having the opportunity to play. And I want our standard of performance to be such that it doesn't make any difference whether we're playing a tremendous team like the University of Oklahoma or if we're playing the North Monroe Pee Wees, that our, that our standard of performance doesn't change, that the expectation about how we play doesn't change. And so in relation to motivating the team, I'd, I'd hope that uh, – We've got to that point from a cultural standpoint to where, you know, it's not about who you play. It's just about the opportunity to play. And and I'm sure, you know, he's uh, talking with his team kind of the same way. And obviously they're heavy favorites. and uh, But I'm sure he's talking to his group the exact same way that I'm talking to mine. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just, you know, Saturday somebody's going to put a ball down. and. Whoever are the, the real players will show up when the ball goes down, regardless of who they're playing. Can you talk about Jairus' situation? Sure. Um, Jairus, Braley, I think, got caught up in this a little bit also. Yeah, I, um, we have some set policies on our team in relation to the work that a guy has to put in in order to be listed on the two deep or to start or even play in the game. And those are pretty well spelled out in our, our rules and regulations. And this one was a little bit unique in the sense that our heavy work for Oklahoma has already been basically in. Um, I'm talking about the contact, the, uh, the, the, the various situations that you kind of run into. And so right now we're kind of in a fine-tuned mode. And because Jairus and barely missed that time frame, uh, then they're not listed on the two deep because they missed that time frame, and we do this on a weekly basis. Obviously, generally, uh, this decision is, you know, uh, you don't know exactly who's come out of the last game healthy. You don't know exactly how many practices, and so, you know, things uh, in-game change. But the uh, those guys missed that bulk of that work. Do I expect them both to play? Absolutely. But uh, we just have some policies in place, and most of you guys know I'm kind of, kind of a rules guy. I'm kind of a policy guy. This is what you have to do, and there's no exceptions to that. And so, but I do expect both of them to play, and 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 I don't think that there's going to be any uh, drop off in their abilities to play. Just that's the way that we do things around here, and so we're going to stick with that policy. Well, first of all, I don't think Oklahoma has a bad player, and so we know that we're facing a really good player. Uh, the second part of it is is we went back and we watched his high school video to get a better idea and um, about you know kind of who he is and, and what he's about. Uh, he's a tremendous athlete, a guy that can extend plays. He's got a very, very live arm. Uh, you know I've talked multiple times before about how much I enjoy watching you know the prolific quarterbacks on video. And uh, just uh, study on him, and and uh, he's um, he's a guy that's going to present an awful lot of problems, uh, not just for us, but for everybody else in uh, the rest of their season. What are some things that he does well that you've seen that could be different? Yeah, than ready for? no, he, he does everything pretty well. <laughs> um, he's uh, his ball placement's excellent. He's got a very very live arm. Uh, he extends plays, and probably the thing that all great quarterbacks have uh, based off his high school video anyway is there's things that I can't coach. I mean, there's things that Colton does that I, I mean, I had no part in it. And, and that's that judgment and that feel for the game. While we can make them understand a little bit better sometimes about direction that they're going to go with a ball, we can't, uh, you know, how to step up in a pocket. We can't teach them to feel the pressure. We can't uh, give them that sense of, of this is the perfect time to throw the ball. You know, I stand back there with the quarterbacks in practice and, and probably to their discontent, I, you know, I'll say I'm back here going now. Now, I, this is whenever I would have thrown the ball, you know, just to try to get them, especially the younger quarterbacks, into this little gauge of this is when the ball needs to be thrown. But the great ones already kind of know that. And, um, and he has that. He has all those things. And f I do not know the young man, but from everything that I've heard about him, that he's also a tremendous leader and a guy that's got a great work ethic. And um, they've also got a, an outstanding player in Blake Bell, <laughs> I mean, who we do have a little bit more video on. And, I was, and I've been in those difficult decisions as a head coach sometimes when you have to make those decisions. But when Blake Bell was not announced as the starter last week, 
um, because of his age in relation to Trevor Knight's age, we assume that that's the direction that they were probably headed. Because uh, generally speaking, if you've got an older player and, you know, uh, there's going to be a little bit more latitude in relation to um, anointing that guy as the starter. And uh, and when it went on, you know, through to this this week, basically, then, you know, we, we kind of knew at that point in time that's the direction it was headed. So we've been preparing for him for a while. And uh, he's a guy that's going to, uh, again, be difficult to tackle. But one of the nice things for us is we have a guy that's kind of that same way. And so our, our defensive players have become acclimated to that over a, a, a time frame. And so that's not going to be a hard transition for us along those lines. You mentioned going into the season just what you had to do last year in terms of your decision-making process during the game because your defense was banged up. You were more aggressive on offense. So how does that change in the first game because you're still filling out what your defense is doing and then what your offense can do? How does that change this season? Well, I think I have a pretty good idea about what both sides can do. I mean, there's a little bit of Christmas in the first ball game in the sense that you have a pretty good idea what you're getting, but there's always a couple surprises. Uh, you hope that they're, they're really good ones. Uh, but I, I think I've got a really uh, good feel. I think our staff's got a great feel. I think our players have got a great feel about who we are. Uh, and so, uh, you know, in terms of concerns going in, obviously there's concerns with the University of Oklahoma and their athleticism and their history. In terms of concerns for us, I don't really have a lot of concerns in our preparation. I think we've prepared well. I think we're healthy. Uh, I think that um, you know, were a fast, more mature football team. I think one of the concerns, and I, I've, I've, you know, again, I'm not trying to walk back down the same path that we've walked to before, but I think one of the difficult things when we first got here was because the youth of the team, our in-game transitions were so hard. I mean, you'd um, – you know, you'd make a suggestion on the sidelines. I mean, you weren't even coaching. You were just trying to make a suggestion to guys to say, can you really – can you do this? Because, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't know. I think that obviously we, we know that we're going to see some surprises, but the reality with this team and with the maturity of this team, one of the fun things I think as coaches is to be able to see new things on game day and then be able to adjust to them. Uh, that's one of the best parts of coaching. And – We've got a, a mature enough football team right now to where I don't uh, – while that's been a concern sometimes in the past, uh, I, don't, I don't have that concern right now. If we need to make an adjustment, I, you know, we can go back um, on both sides of the football and say, hey, do you remember when we did this? We need to do this again. I know we haven't practiced it, but we need to do this. And I don't think our guys would blink. And we actually even did it with our older players during preseason camp one practice to where we went out there – and we did a bunch of stuff that we haven't covered in a long time just to see how they'd respond to it, to kind of prepare them for stuff like this. And they did an outstanding job. Now, they don't know it. They do now. They just found out. Okay? But the, there was one practice out there where we just kind of threw a bunch of stuff at them just to see that were things that we've done in the past just to see if they'd uh, recall. And they did. And uh, so as a coach, that's obviously very comforting. Coach, there's been a lot of flashbacks to last season's opener at Arkansas. How much of that have you really talked with your team about, you know, kind of remembering the play that you had there, not necessarily the outcome, the game, but just the things that were done there that can help this year at Oklahoma? I think you're always willing. I don't think you can live in the past, but I think you're always willing to go back and look at experiences, uh, good or bad, that can prepare you better for um, what's getting ready to happen. The thing that we know that's going to happen in this game is there's going to be good things that are going to happen to us, and there's also going to be bad things. We already know that. I talked to the players about reacting and responding, and I think I've gone through that you know, before in here. Reacting is when you don't think something's going to happen and all of a sudden it happens and you're not prepared to have an answer. Responding is whenever you know that things are going to happen and you handle it well. And I think that the Arkansas game last year in relation to obviously the national ranking, the crowd, uh, you know, being 21 points down in the game, uh, finding a way to kind of come back. I think that th those are great things for our football team in relation to understanding that that uh, you just kind of keep playing and that there are going to be bad things that are going to happen. And if you respond correctly rather than reacting, then you can make positives come out of things because the momentum is always going to change back and forth. Um, and, you know, uh, there's going to be good things too. And, and you have to respond well to those good things too or you can't become apathetic and complacent. So uh, we have talked about last last year and, and talked about individual games even as a group. 
Um, now, is that going to have any bearing on uh, the outcome on Saturday? Probably not, other than the lessons learned. And, and that's what we've got to continue to grow is the, you know, is, is continuing to become a, even a more mature team and, and learning lessons. Coach, maturity, I think, has to help you along the way in season opportunities because there were two or three chances in that first half of the Arkansas game as well as multiple games through the rest of the season where you guys could have really laid the wood early um, had the opportunity been seized. So I've got to think the experience this year will certainly aid you if that comes up certainly. I don't think there's any question that that um, there, there's always lost opportunities, and I think that's what you're speaking to, correct? Yeah, there's lost opportunities, uh, and and you've got to seize those against very good football teams like we're getting ready to play. Um, guys have got to step up and make plays, and uh, in those moments, to when you, uh, again, you never know when those, that, that critical play is going to come because generally there's about ten in a ball game. Some people say, well, this play, well, it's not that play. There's about ten in a game that are really critical. Sometimes really um, quarterback looks the wrong direction against the coverage. He might still throw a completion, but he missed a touchdown. Maybe the coaches are the only ones that know that and understand that. And and we have to seize those opportunities. And, and again, as you mentioned, you'd like to think with a more mature team that uh, many of those opportunities are not going to be lost this year. Does that answer your question, Gene? You hope so. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have. I think there's a nice buzz around town. I'm sure my, the players are feeling it in their classrooms. We haven't talked real openly about that, but I'm sure they're feeling a little bit of that. And there's there's um, there's good and bads to that. You know, the the good obviously is that people are excited, and I'm excited for our players because they've worked hard and they deserve that. Uh, but there are distractions that come along with that also in terms of you know people patting you on the back or uh, you know the the pressures of uh, you know going in and and doing what probably the national media would expect is is not plausible. The um, and so there's uh, there's pressures along those lines. There's certainly I, I've been a little bit surprised as I was last year, and I, I guess I still am. And maybe I'm naive. I wouldn't think at 52 I'd be very naive to very many things. Just the amount of, the amount of national attention. I think the amount of national attention is greater than the local attention. Um, and I think that's what's probably surprising. In terms of your family, what have some of your family members, maybe your friends in Oklahoma, said to you about this game coming up? Yeah, I, um, I, the, the only ones I gave tickets to were my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter, and my wife. Um, my, my wife's family, my uh, family, I, I'm just concerned they'd show up in Oklahoma stuff, and so I'm not going to give them tickets. Uh, but, no, they're all excited. I've got a group of – of my former teammates in high school, a group of my former teammates in college that are all that have bought tickets and are all coming to the game, and they've bought a bunch of Warhawk stuff, as has my family and my wife's family. Uh, but um, you know, it's um, you know, it's it's neat it's neat to go back. You know, the last time that I was there was not a great experience for me, and that was uh, back in 1979. Uh, Oklahoma. I was a true freshman at the University of Tulsa. It's our second ball game of the season. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up being a huge Oklahoma fan, Sooner fan. I was I was truly more of a Tulsa fan just because of growing up and watching Jerry Rome and Howard Twilley. And probably none of this really makes any difference to anybody. But I'll give this real quick. We're standing there getting ready to come out on the field, and my head coach John Cooper was looking over at Barry Switzer, who was the head coach at the University of Oklahoma at the time. And I'm like ninth in the tunnel. Okay, and again, I'm a true freshman. Um, Billy Sims is their running back over there. It was, you know, so there's, it's a regionally televised game, and I'm excited. And I'm feeling good too. I'm feeling real good. And we come running out on the field, and and I'm I'm strutting a little bit. I'm kicking the legs up. I'm feeling good. And we had this defensive lineman by the name of George Gilbert. And I could hear him laughing in behind me, so I knew something was probably wrong to begin with. But I'm kicking my heels up in behind me, and all of a sudden he catches the back of my heel and wraps back my left heel, kicks around my right leg, and I go into a forward roll on regional television coming out of the tunnel. 
So um, fortunately, we worked an awful lot on forward rolls in practice, and I was up, and I, of course, I had my name on the back of my jersey, and I was looking for the largest crowd that I could duck into so that nobody could read my number or my name. Uh, so that's, that was my last venture into, into uh, Owen Field and into that stadium. Uh, played Oklahoma a couple other times, but then that's been in different scenarios where it was not at their their field. So I'm just praying right now that actually that none of my players hearing this story will, as we run on the field, will tr- hit the back of my heel and I'll go rolling in front of uh, now an 85,000 seat crowd. Did you guys get that? <laughs> They're all both over there smiling right now. I my my uh, I have been working on my rolls. Um, it's more that 52 year old roll where you just kind of fall and it takes you a long time to get up. And while you're down there on the ground, you just look to see if there's anything that you need to pick up because you don't want to have to bend up back over again, right? Any advice? Like you say, you can't you never get that pressure on you more than you can yourself. But because of the raised expectations, do you see a change in yourself or anything, or just the pressure you have more sleepless? You know. Um, I don't know that I see anything. Um, you know, probably ask the players and the coaches probably more than that. I mean, I have high expectations for this team, and they know that. And I think any time that the expectations rise, I think that I, I've tend to, I tend to be more realistic than a pessimist or an optimist. Okay, I, I kind of believe what I see. And I, and I have high expectations for this team. Uh, they know that, and in the process, I might have been a little bit, uh, maybe a little, not testy, uh, just a little bit harder on them in relation to uh, this is a, this is a, this is a grown man group. These are grown men now, and um, being accountable and uh, being cerebral in their thought in relation to the game and how they approach the game. So. Uh, but I don't think it's necessarily pressure. I just I have I want, as always, as all coaches do. I want this group to get everything that they can possibly get out of this great game, and they've got a special opportunity, as all teams do, uh, at the start of the season, to say this is kind of who we are and this is what we're about, and they don't get these back. I mean, these things don't come around very often. Not very many people get to do what these guys are getting a chance to do. And, so, and I know that. I'm going to get to do it, at least for a few more years anyway. Uh, but they don't. And so consequently, I, I want this to be the best that it can possibly be for them because I, I recognize that this is, you know, we're into, we're into memory making. And I want, I want these to be good memories. You guys are going from hitting each other to hitting an actual team. So what's the biggest adjustment from going to practice to that first game and saying, okay, this is, this is real now? Oh, I think we get pretty real out there on the practice field. We we like each other, but they're uh, when you get on the field, there's, um, you know, you 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 flip the switch a little bit, and so I, I don't know that we've, uh, um, I don't know that Cameron Blinks has necessarily pulled off Jerron Ham when we're out there playing the game and say, Jerron, I really like you, and so I'm not going to hit you very hard. This is not kind of one of those kind of games. It's. Um, and so we've been playing real football, and we've had a very nice physical camp. Uh, we've backed off the hitting here over the last couple of days, and we'll continue to do so, make sure that we get to the game healthy. But we've had a very, very physical camp. We, we've played football all the way to you – know, I mean, we've actually – everybody's played. I mean, it's uh, – we've cut blocked. We've done all the things that, that you're going to have happen in a game. And so I, I'm, a, I'm a real firm believer in that. I think that you play better when you play the game. And if you take bits and pieces of the game out of it, uh, where you're not cut blocking, for instance, um, then you take um, – your players aren't as ready to play. And uh, there is no substitute for playing. You can practice all you want, but the reality of it is the more you play the game, the better you become. And you got to have those tools, obviously. you got to have an understanding of – the fundamentals, and that's what practice is about, is about getting better at those fundamentals. But the reality of it is there's no substitute for playing. Last year you talked about playing within yourself, not looking for your opponents or trying to do too much. But you said at that bowl game you thought that you looked out there trying to do too much, trying to play. Yeah. And do you worry about that going into the season mm-hmm. over because they're trying to do more than last year? Or do you think it's a mature group to where they're just going to play within themselves and the things that you preach to them? No, I, I think they're – um, I think they're comfortable within who they are right now. 
I, I don't think there was any question that between a little bit of the illness and a little bit of the crowd there at the at the bowl game, um, that everybody was trying. This is a pleasing. This group's a bunch of pleasers. I mean, they 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 really do. They want to. Uh, they've got great ownership, and when you have ownership, then you tend to want to please. Uh, not just your coaches and your teammates, but even the fan base. And uh, I think that um, they they did put pressure on, on themselves along those lines. But I, I think we've kind of grown out of that right now. I, I'm not really concerned about that right now. I think that they're. Um, I think they're more into to just playing the game. I, I think they're more wrapped up in, in the team than some of the outside stuff because I think we've, we've had to handle a lot of the outside things. And so I don't think that's really necessarily a part of us right now, so I don't have a lot of concerns about it. That's an interesting question, though. Looking at the depth chart for Oklahoma, what are some of the matchups that you look at like going head-to-head? -head? I know that like corners is a big deal with you. Talking about last year with some of these big-time receivers they face and getting gunshots later in the year, but do you feel like every matchup here <laughs> – No, I mean, I think every matchup, obviously, if you if you just went on height and weight and 40 times and all the stuff that give people stars, I mean, we don't have a good matchup. I mean, I think Bob looks a lot better than I do. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of, you know, they even got that matchup going. Um, you know, we recognize that, but this is a great team game. And when you have great team games to where it's about functioning as a group and uh, understanding things and all those that's kind of what um, that's what makes this game so much fun is the fact that it's very difficult for one person to go out and just take over a game or sometimes in other sports that can happen and uh, you know so we'll go out there and and it's going to take a tremendous effort for us to be competitive I mean it is they've, they've got an outstanding football team that's one of the reasons why uh, they are who they are and where they've been that's why they're so highly respected and so we're going to have to play a great game in order to be competitive. But we are going to play on Saturday. Uh, we're, you know, uh, so we are going to get off the bus and somebody isn't going to put a ball down. And, and then you know, we'll play and, and see how it comes out. Tabby has one more. Thank you, Gene. No, he just said thank you, Coach, and I was just responding to that. No, go ahead, Tabby. Okay, we're talking about Jairus and Haynes and him getting playing mm -hmm. on Saturday, but because he's been held out at times, and then you have Montrell and then you had Devontae who had come on and had a great fall camp. Do you think it would be like a running game by just a big slew of guys? Yeah, I, th I think uh, it will be a running game out of, out of a big slew of guys. Uh, I think we kind of knew that a little bit going into the season. I mean, you've got five guys that have played a, a significant amount of football, um, some through great play, some through injuries. But in the process, they've all kind of grown up, and they do some very good things. And I have always been a proponent and continue to be one of, I think that while the, the uh, you have a play called, okay, and it is a play to the right, uh, that each one of those running backs run that play just a little differently. And while they understand the blocking schemes, they all have a little different style to them. And in the process, that same play that you run with your offensive line and your team's executed, it changes every time that there's a different running back in there for the defense. And I think those are great things. And we knew we had a bunch of good running backs coming into this season. Uh, we will, if somebody's got the hot hand that day, uh, they're, what, what was it back in the 70s, the, the biorhythms, their biorhythms are up, uh, then that, that's the guy that's going to be getting the football. And, uh, but we'll, uh, we're going you know, to play a lot of running backs because they've earned that right. I trust them. I think they're good players. And, um, and I, I like the way that, that, that the play changes when you have a different running back in there. I think it's, I think it's doubly hard on the defense. I don't have – well, the biorhythms, you know, Tabby, as you well know, are – those go up and down apparently. Uh, 
I guess it's kind of like those mood rings or something like that, but that's before your time. Um, but, yeah. Gene, I, you, you can identify just a little bit. You're not quite as old as I am, but you can identify just a little bit with with that. No, I just, they're, they're, you know, sometimes you're, uh, the, the guys just, don't ask me why, but, um, you know, every athlete has good days and bad. Nolan Ryan had bad days. He had a lot of good days, too, you know, but his, not every day is the same. And, and so you find that guy that's, that's uh, that's on that game. He's he's feeling it. I meant, I, um, I, I really didn't know what Byron means, Byron. But the styles, like, what's the difference? Is like, oh, the different like styles. Byron's okay. Style and then Devontae's. What do they bring when they get out? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Jairus is this slasher. Um, you know, he he's going to he's going to attack creases. He's going to throw his body through creases and all that. Devontae's somewhat similar. Uh, you know, uh, a a little bit more. Um, A little bit more take the edge off. Uh, it's Tyler Runner. Uh, Courtney's a speed guy, in the sense that he's gonna, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna find a crease, but he's just gonna throw his body through crease. He's not gonna take angles off defenders as much. Uh, and then Moe's a little quicker back. He likes the, you know, he likes a lot of jump cuts and and those type of things. And then I throw Tyler Kane in there right now. I think the jury's still out on how much, what Tyler will do for us this season because I think we've got a pretty loaded. Running back core, and he gets Centarius back at some point in time, and that adds one more guy into the mix. Um, but Tyler's this, you know, really difficult to tackle, you know, break you down kind of guy. It's going to hit and spin and do all those other kinds of things. And so, you know, you do have some different styles, and uh, you know, they they each can be beneficial. And uh, some of it's against defensive front and concept, and then some of it's about, you know. Uh, this guy's a little harder to tackle than this guy, and so we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. You're welcome. Everybody got really quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> Much does this game just establish the tone for the entire season for you guys? Uh, it's definitely going to – it's a big game for us. We, uh, we're we looking forward to competing against top-tier opponents at this point in time. And I feel like win or lose, uh, it doesn't really change anything because we're, we're about 1-0 and each week. So whoever we're playing that week going in, we're focused on beating that opponent. But it definitely would be a big momentum swing for us. How excited are you just to get just to get out on the field and like not hit each other and finally hit opponent and have it all? I'm the- looking forward to it. Uh, I try not to beat on our corners too bad because they're my teammates, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to going against some another opponent and getting out there, having that competitive spirit on the on game day. Um, it's the same coach Barry to me. Uh, I've been here from when we weren't, I guess, as, as talked about around, but he, he's always preached the same thing. Want to know each week and, and, uh, go out there, give your best effort and fight. Not really around campus. I don't think too many people know who I am, so they don't really approach me. They see me in a helmet. But uh, definitely people from home write me on Facebook and Twitter and asking questions, but not not really around campus too much. How do you know who you are? Like, you call this guy a class? Everybody thinks I play basketball for some reason. <laughs> Jerron, with uh, Brent Leonard moving on to the NFL ranks, so hopefully he'll be back there soon. Uh, do you feel a little pressure to step up into his shoes and kind of be that go-to receiver this season? Yeah, definitely. Being a senior receiver, me and me and Tavares often talk about you know leading the pack and and being as effective as we can and, and taking over because Brent had 104 passes, so 
We're going to make up for that definitely this season. We will. I don't think anything could pose a problem to us. Uh, I noticed they like to play a lot of man. They they don't have too many returning on, in the secondary, but we've gotten individual films on a lot of guys. And the guys who we haven't, we did the same thing as Coach Barry looked at some of their high school film. So we're, we're pretty well prepared in the receiver room. Is there come up, in terms of this game and just how it could be a back and forth game since it's the first game of the season? Are you guys prepared to have that extra oomph if you need it in the fourth quarter to go out and say we need this first down or we need this touchdown to win the game? I know because you know during the regular during the practice time you guys aren't doing that. I know you're going hard in practice, but are you prepared in the fourth quarter to say okay we got to get this first fourth first down or we got to get this touchdown? In, in practice, we we do go over situations like that, and uh, we are prepared. We uh, have game plans in place for that to go out and execute. So we're confident in in any situation that may come up during the game. Senior linebacker Cameron White. Floor is open for questions. <sighs> Haven't not got to uh, hit anybody for a year, basically in, in a game situation at least. Is that first person that comes around the end got a little bit more uh, Cameron Blake's on him than uh, anyone else? Um, I've been thinking about that um, since camp started. Um, a lot of live situations we had during this uh, camp. Uh, I actually got uh, took the edge off a lot, so uh, Coach Barry helped me out a lot with that, with those live situations. Can we talk about just how prepared you think this football team is? I mean, I know you're one of the close personnel in this group. This is um, one of the most experienced team I've been a part of. Uh, Coach Barry, you know, and the coaching staff. You know, a lot of days they just come out and watch us practice because, um, you know, a lot of guys know what they're doing and. Um, the game just comes so much better for us when we got experience like we do. What are the challenges of preparing for a quarterback and watching his high school footage? Is that different in terms of preparing for a freshman? It's not obviously it's exactly like his high school game. So what are the challenges of that? Um, it's kind of like a wild call. You don't know what you're going to get um, dealing with somebody like that because uh, you can grow a lot from your senior year in high school to your freshman year in college. So. Um, I'm anxious to see what we're going to get when we get out there. But um, we did everything necessarily, you know, everything we could do to prepare for this game. And um, I think we're ready. How do you guys make it through as a defense, the feeling out process of the first game of the season where both teams are kind of seeing what the other team can do? How do you make it through that part of the game? Um, a lot of times, you know, we uh, just just a numbers game. Uh, we just go by the tendencies, what they do. Um, the past season they did, um, if they try something new, that's when we um, go to the coaches and communicate with them on the sideline. You described in Trevor Nyan's press that you're very glad to come from Bylock and really is the quality just because of his mobility and the things that he can do. So how is it going against Colton every day in practice and then watching film on both sides, what film do you have? How do you think that will prepare you on Saturday? Um, going against Colton, a uh, uh, very uh, agile and uh, – athletic quarterback as Cole now. He can prepare you for uh, any type of matchup because he can throw the ball, he can run the ball. Um, he gives you every aspect of the game that you need to improve your defense. So uh, I put him up against anybody in the nation. So uh, he prepares us, you know, the best way he can. Being a grad student for five years and playing, it's like every time I talk to like Oklahoma media, they think, okay, well, how's your one going to do with this hostile environment? But you've played everywhere, at LSU, Arkansas, and Auburn twice. Florida State, that type of thing, and kind of on the same lines I asked Coach Barry, do you feel like y'all all play within yourselves and this is just another one of those hostile environments you're pretty much used to? Yeah, that's what comes with uh, the experience of playing in those big games. Uh, you played in one place, you played in all. Uh, um, you know, they all, you know, 
big crowds uh, say pretty much the same thing, but um, we just uh, stick to our game plan and do what we do best. Obviously, the goal for you guys to hold them to less points than you can score, but in terms of not necessarily numbers, what are some of your goals defensively to say this would be a good first defensive game for us? Um, to come out and um, first off, um, execute, execute our game plan and um, play comfortable within ourselves and um, stop the run. And we want to be known as uh, one of the top, you know, defensive run, defensive teams in the nation. And, uh, you know, going against a good running back like Damian Williams is a uh, perfect way to set the tone for everybody. You guys are a middle linebacker in the spring, but uh, like being your first game there at middle linebacker, is there anything that's like last loosened to tie up or is it that you feel like you're pretty much ready to go and of course that leadership that comes with that middle spot? Um, yeah, um, it, it's pretty much the same way as playing outside to me uh, in this defense. You can, uh, you can play anyway. If you know outside, then you know middle. Uh, it's pretty much all the same responsibilities, but I don't think that Mike, you just, you know, making uh, the signals and, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, uh, no big change.